in this industry could you possibly have two men covered in blood, thumbtacks stuck in their back and their kneecaps, they've just burned each other, but they love each other. Vince McMahon luckily did not have to walk down to the Elimination Chamber to announce that you were cashing in because we don't know what would have happened. But um, he comes out and he announces you're cashing in and you become WB champion. Nobody saw it coming, you, you cashed in the money in the bank and you were champion for three weeks. Um, you've said loads of times publicly that you had hoped that they would change the plans of Cena Triple H at WrestleMania and go with you. Ratings went up and all that stuff, it didn't happen. Then you end up in a match with Mick Foley at WrestleMania and kind of ironically, Nobody talks about Cena Triple H from WrestleMania 22, but a lot of people talk about Edge and McFoley from WrestleMania 22. Can you talk about that match, um, it coming about, how you guys are feeling about it, and, um, and then of course, why the fuck did you go through a table of fire? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, going back to the Money in the Bank thing, we, nobody really knew what Money in the Bank was, if you're going all the way back to WrestleMania 21, and Again, th this is brand new. Nobody knows the, really knows the concept, but it dawned on me about halfway through, like, right, this thing can be cashed in at any time, right? Well, I'm a heel, so I should cash this in when somebody's beat to shit <laughs> and try and win the title. So I pitched that to Vince. Vince not thinking, okay, well, next week I'm gonna show up and they'll tell me that I'm winning the world title for the first time. I had no idea that was gonna happen. And you know, if you see me hand the briefcase over to him, uh, he says, prove me right. Right before I power walk down there. And because he was the only one that thought this was a good idea. The only one. Everyone else was against it. And uh, so I was like, right, I'm gonna prove you right then. And try and do whatever I can to change those plans for three weeks. Ratings went up, hits on the website were through the roof and everything. I was like, right, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna change the plans for WrestleMania. And they didn't change. Then I got told I'm working Mick Foley. I'm like, okay, right, this is amazing. I love Mick. He's maybe more insane than me. <laughs> huh, A hardcore match, good Lord. What, what have they done here? <laughs> and, and Mick really did want to have a WrestleMania moment because up until that point, he hadn't had that. He deserves that. He deserved it. And so I just got on my, my weird Frankenstein thinking cap and, uh, and, and tried to come up with some stuff. And Mick did the same thing. And then you get these two really possibly sadomasochistic men together that are willing to really hurt each other and put us at WrestleMania and you're gonna get flaming tables and barbed wire and, and barbed wire wrapped around bellies and barbed wire bats and And here's the thing with Mick. It's like, it's legit barbed wire. It, it's not, none of this like shaved off stuff. It's none of like, he hit me in the stomach and it stuck in my stomach. And I remember <laughs> landing in the thumbtacks and going, oh, <laughs> right. You know what the worst part of that was? After that, when I got hit in the stomach with the baseball bat, I land on my knees right in thumbtacks. <laughs> it's a very strange feeling to have thumbtacks in your kneecaps. Don't try that. <laughs> Don't even Wikipedia that. That's not homework at all. That's what I remember. That and also getting it in the, the palms of your hands. was uh, that, that pretty much sucked. Uh, I didn't think <laughs> the flaming table thing through too much. Because let's, let, for anyone who did not watch the match, Mick Foley, not the most fashionable man we've ever seen, but maybe the smartest because he hey, is- Hey, somebody thinks he is. I just heard a whistle. <laughs> There we go, it's one of the guys in the plaid shirt, obviously. <laughs> um, but Mick is like, Mick is head to toe dressed. You're topless. And you're the one that goes through the flaming table. Again, didn't think it through too much. Uh, 
And, and okay, so here's the thing. If you saw me do something idiotic like that, it was my idea. I, 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 it, because, you know, if you, if you see me get FU'd off of two tables off of a ladder, that was my idea. If you see, if it's something that, that is stupid to my body, it was my idea because yeah, that's just the way my mind worked. And I you know, was always, like I said, trying to think of the quality of the match. So <laughs> when I really understood the position I had put myself in was when I was running back at Mick. And I went, oh, shit. <laughs> I don't have a shirt on. And I'm diving face first into this thing. He's going through with his back and he's got 18 layers of clothes on. <laughs> and and they, they put this like flame retardant gel on us, which was washed off within two minutes. It, we had sweated it off. So <laughs> I dove through and I went, right, I'm just gonna tuck my head into Mick's big old belly and, and hope for the best. But I wrapped my arms around him, so I burnt my arms singed all the hair off my arms, my hands, singed a big chunk of my hair off of my head. And I rolled off and I just saw my body smoking. So when I'm crawling over, I'm like, <laughs> like I, I was trying to make it look like I was in shock, but I was smelling my own burnt flesh, just thinking, well, I think I'm okay. <laughs> because I can think that I think I'm okay. And uh, just rolling over to Mick and, and putting my arm on him, I went, I love you, Mixter. <laughs> and he goes, I love you too, Edgester. <laughs> it's like only in this industry could you possibly have two men covered in blood, thumbtacks stuck in their back and their kneecaps. They've just burned each other, but they love each other. <laughs>